So I get a lot of questions about the DMC2 machines asking if they can cut exotic or difficult materials like stainless steel and titanium, mainly for knife making applications, which surprisingly a lot of people are doing. So in this video, I'm going to do some tests in 304 stainless and grade 6 titanium to see how the machine handles cutting these challenging materials. The first and most important thing to note when cutting these materials is that they are not forgiving, meaning if you are using the wrong type of end mill, or if your cutting surface speed is too high or too low, these materials will destroy your end mill very quickly and burn them up. With softer materials like aluminum, you can get away with wildly incorrect feeds and speeds, especially if you throw a little coolant in, but now we're going to absolutely need coolant along with precisely correct cutting speeds. I decided to do some tests with my 4mm diameter HRC65 coated carbide end mill, and so I took that tool and plugged it into an online machining calculator. This gave me the feeds, speeds, and RPM that I'm going to want to stick to for successful cutting. My plan is to machine some squares out of some rectangular blocks of material, and that's really just because this was the easiest titanium offcuts I could buy from a local machinist. I modeled some square extrusions in the material and I'm doing an adaptive toolpath to clear material away and then a slower finishing pass at the end. One thing to note here is that I am doing very tiny cuts, only about 0.03mm width of cut in both the stainless and titanium, and both of these tests are at 8mm depth of cut. So up first is the 304 stainless steel piece, let's see how that goes.
So that all went well. Next is the grade 6 titanium test piece. More or less the same thing as before, but I couldn't fit as many square extrusions, so there is only 4 on this shorter piece. So as you can see, everything went perfectly fine without any drama. The walls are very smooth and the machine surfaces look excellent. But I did make one mistake and in my titanium part there are lines on the walls. And that's because I forgot to add a linear lead in and lead out on the finishing passes. So the end mill just came directly down against the surface and then started cutting. And then exited again touching the surface. That's a very amateur and simple mistake that you always want to avoid by using that lead in and lead out. So this is actually the second test cut I did in titanium. 
The first one, I had both ways turned on, meaning the end mill is cutting in both climb and conventional milling to save time and finish faster. In practice, this did not sound great on the conventional directions of cutting, but it sounded fine in climb directions, and I think that combination of conventional milling, plus a dull end mill from a bit too high of a step over, plus no coolant for a few seconds when the coolant wasn't aimed properly, made things overheat really fast, and this is what happened from that. When I heard it sounding bad, I quickly ran over and e-stopped the machine, and upon inspection it looks like the tips of the end mill all dulled out very quickly and started to weld chips to them, and the part was starting to mush hot material together rather than actually cut it away cleanly, which you can see around that left edge. I'm actually amazed this much damage occurred without breaking the end mill. So in future, I would stick to climb milling only in these tougher materials, and really make sure your coolant is right on the cutting action all the time. I tend to turn it down as low as possible just to get nicer videos and not have it splash on the camera lens, but the pump on the DMC2 Mini is a lot more powerful than it looks in most of my videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.